Godot 3.5 introduced a new tween animation system that is much more convenient to use as you don't need tween nodes anymore. It was designed for Godot 4 and adapted to Godot 3.5 where the tween node still exists. That way, nothing breaks in existing projects and you can use the new tween system for new animations. In this video, we'll first create a move to mouse tween animation step by step. Then you will get an overview of the tween code for a mobile game's end screen and a 3D hand of cards. This video is sponsored by our Godo courses. More on that at the end. Let's put the new tween system to use. We're going to code a sprite so that when we click somewhere on the screen, it rotates and moves to the mouse cursor using tweens. So I've prepared a scene here with a sprite. Uh, you can use any sprite like the project icon if you want. And there's an empty script attached to it just to get started quickly. And we're going to start by detecting uh, mouse button presses. For that, we define the unhandled input function. This allows you to listen to button presses. And the first thing we need is to filter the kinds of events that we get because we're going to get um, keyboard presses and other things. We can say if the event is an input event uh, mouse button, like so, this allows you to check for the kind of event that you get. And the event is pressed. That way, uh, this will be true only if we're pressing one of the mouse buttons, left mouse click, right mouse click, etc. We're going to call a function something like move to mouse and we're going to define that function <clears throat> below. So I define the function. We're going to start by creating a tween object. To do that, you call the create tween function. And on that tween object, you can call function to create and start animations. So I'll call tween dot tween property to tween the position of my sprite. This function takes four arguments. The first one is the object to animate. In this case, it's the sprite to which we attach the script, so we use the self keyword. Next is the property that we need to put in quotes. Here, I'm going to animate the global position of the sprite. You'll see why in a second. So in quotes, I write global position. And then you need to give the final value for the animation. So uh, I'm going to call the function get global mouse position to get the position of the mouse in the game world and not only on the screen. Uh, this is why we animate the global position of our sprite because this function works uh, with global coordinates. And the final argument is going to be the animation duration. So we can uh, set it to one second. Notice a couple of things. If you've used the previous tween node, you don't need to give the starting value to tween a property. The starting value will be the position of your sprite. So uh, if you want to change the starting point of an animation, you can say something like global position equals vector two dot zero. Of course, we want to animate from the current position, so we don't need to add that extra line. And with just that, you can run the scene and when you click, the sprite will move to where you clicked. The animations automatically play. You don't need to call a tween dot start like before. It's done automatically for you. It's a bit more convenient. Now, we can do another thing that's pretty cool. Uh, we can chain function calls when creating the tween to give the animations that we add afterwards default properties. So one of these functions is called set trends or set transition. And uh, we can give it one of the transition types to change how the ship animates because right now the motion is not great. So I'm going to use a one like the quintic one. And after that, you want to call uh, set ease to change where the transition applies. Is in means transition will apply at the start of the animation, so the ship will accelerate. Is out means this will apply at the end of the animation, so the ship will slow down as it reaches the target. You can try ease out and run to see that now the ship starts very fast and it slows down as it reaches the target position. 
pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to use ease in out, so it's going to accelerate and then slow down later. Um, <clears throat> and let's add another animation that runs parallel to this one. And you'll see this feature is pretty cool. We're going to turn the ship towards the target position. So first we need to calculate the target rotation of the ship. And in this case, um, we're going to do it like this. Uh, we're going to start from the sprite. We're going to um, start from its position. We're going to get the direction to the global mouse position. Uh, this is going to give us a vector that points uh, from the ship towards where we clicked. And we're going to call the angle function on that vector to get the corresponding angle in radians. Now, my sprite is turned to point up by default. So I'm, I have to add pi divided by 2 to that angle to offset it by 90 degrees and align it um, with the mouse position. And then I can use the target rotation to animate the rotation of my ship. To do that, I'm going to uh, call a function on the tween. The first function I'll call is parallel. This is going to make the next animation that I make with tween property uh, parallel to the first one, meaning they will play together. So we can call tween property. And there again, we're going to animate the sprite, we're going to animate its rotation property, and the final value is going to be the target rotation. I'll make the animation a bit shorter. And note that because we called set transition and set ease when creating the tween, these properties will also apply to our second animation. You can run the game and click to see that the ship is now turning and moving towards the mouse. Now, it's not perfect. I don't recommend using that in your games. You can see the rotation is off at times, uh, but this is just to illustrate how you can run two tween animations simultaneously. If you remove the call to the parallel function, you will cue your second animation. So now, if I click, first the ship will move to the target location and then it will rotate. Um, this change in the system makes it so you don't have to calculate delays in every animation to queue them one after the other. Now they just queue naturally. If you used twin nodes before, you should see how the new twin system saves you a bit of code and is a bit more intuitive as well. This example uses very similar code to what we just did uh, to animate three elements sequentially. And this is uh, like what you see at the end of mobile games where you get uh, gems or stars or something like that when you beat a level. Okay, so let's look at the code for this. Um, first, I wanted to show a little trick that I found neat. When you know exactly which nodes you're going to animate, uh, you want to put them in an array typically. And one way you can do that is you select the nodes in the scene dock and click and drag them onto the array inside the brackets, and it's going to get the nodes and add the commas for you. It's pretty neat. Okay, so we have a function, animate rectangles appearing, that gets called when we click the button. You can see that the first line is creating a tween like we did before. We create the tween, change the transition, and the easing. And then we use a for loop. Um, we set the starting point for uh, that gem, and then we animate it. We first animate the scale, and then in parallel, we animate the rotation. The interesting thing is that because tweens automatically queue unless you call parallel on them, with the loop, we'll get six animations in total, two per gem, uh, the scale and the rotation. And with just that, you get uh, this end screen in just a couple of lines of code. This last example is a bit more complex. When I click the deck of cards, it generates uh, a few cards right, in a hand dynamically. And when I uh, click to get a new hand, it discards the cards and it's going to generate a new hand. You can see that the number of cards is randomly generated. 
This example is more complex, so I'm going to focus on the tween code. Know that it's free and open source, and you'll find the link in the description. You can see the same pattern at first when we call the create and animate cards function. We first create a tween and then set the transition, and then we set the easing. Then if there are cards on the board, we iterate over them and we tween them, we make them move out of the screen. We generate a random number of cards and uh, for each of these, we create a new card instance. The code looks like this. It's uh, a few lines to set up the card. Um, then we calculate the target transform of the card. That's when you see it fanning out in the hand, the calculations for that are here. Uh, I'll leave you to check the demo for more information. And finally, the tween code itself is relatively simple. We first tween the card scale, so it scales up from the deck. Then we, um, in parallel, we animate the uh, X translation, the X position for that. Right, and notice how we call set transition on this line on this animation, and this transition will only apply to the translation animation we define here. And finally, we queue another animation. We animate the transform of the card from where it is after popping from the deck to where it should be in the hand, and this will automatically animate the position rotation and scale of the card. You can find a link to download this project on our website. You'll find a link in the description below. It contains many demos of the new features in Godot 3.5, including the ones shown here. This video and open source demo is sponsored by our courses. If you're a beginner, you will love Learn to Code from Zero with Godot. It's a complete course to get started with game development with tons of lessons and cool interactive practices. If you are more experienced, then Godot Node Essentials is for you. It's the biggest knowledge base about all the things you can do with Godot's nodes. With that, be creative, have fun, and we'll see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.